In this video, we're going to talk about how to generate sample plots inside of a polygon feature class. So here I have a unit boundary for a 40 acre parcel, and I want to generate a uh, systematic grid for sampling. Now there's a variety of ways to do this. Um, probably the most common way is to use um, a sampling tool called Fishnet. So where that is, is located under data management tools and it's down under sampling. This will depend upon the version of the software that you have, but in this 10.5.1, it's under data management tools, sampling, create fishnet. So in here, I'm going to use two different, two, different, two different tools. One is this create fishnet tool, and the second is this create random points. Now, if you're just doing a completely random sample, you know, when you had, you calculated it out that you need to do uh, 48 plots or something like that in your 40 acre parcel, you could do just 48 random points. But as we remember from forest measurements one, that's that's pretty challenging is the distance and direction between points is not consistent. So navigating to those points is, is fairly challenging. So what I will do is use this create random point just to generate one random point. And then from that, we'll create a fishnet of a systematic grid. And then we can uh, select all of those features in our uh, fishnet and you know, highlight them, edit using the editor tool, and then move those or snap them to our random point. So first step, let's create a random point. So we'll double click on that tool. And I already have it go into the default geodatabase where I'm storing it here. So I have to give it an output feature point class. I'm gonna just call this random. That just has to be under 13 characters long. Um, I'm going to constrain that to my unit boundary. So here I'm using the DevRel unit boundary. So I'm going to click on that unit boundary. And then uh, at this point, the default value here is set to 100 points. So it's going to generate 100 points. I, I don't want it to do that. I want to generate just one point. So there's, there's a variety of ways that you could do this, but one point is going to be adequate for me. Go ahead and click OK then that will randomly generate one point within our DevRel unit boundary. And there it is. So whatever, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap the closest, um, the closest one, I'm making that decision. So when I put in my, um, my fishnet, uh, whatever, whatever uh, point is closest to that, we're just gonna highlight all of those points on that grid and snap them to this point. So next step is we're gonna create fishnet. We're gonna double left click on that. And then we have to give it an output feature class. So you can make sure that that's going to the correct location. Since I set that to the default geodatabase, it is going there. And I'm gonna call this just uh, sample plots. And this could be um, whatever you want. You know, if you're doing uh, 10th acre plots or you know 50th of an acre plot, whatever you want to do. You can name it, name it, whatever. Right, click save there. Uh, the template extent, you want to make sure this, this should not say optional um, because if you set this to basically the world, you're going to create, uh, you know, points on your, on your grid of the world and the tool is going to run for eternity. So make sure you're going to change this to your unit boundary. So whatever your unit boundary is, it's going to fill in the extent and you should be good to go. Next step is you, you, you either have to fill out the cell size and width by height, or you can do the number of columns. I generally do this width and height because we can constrain this to whatever your uh, data frame is measuring in. So here we're in, we're in meters and we'll do the, we'll do the math real quick. We're just going to say that our calculated uh, linear distance between plots was 175 feet. That's a square grid. And we're gonna divide that by 3.28 feet per meter. And that gives us 53.35 um, meters between plots. So we're gonna type that in 53.35 and 
53.35. This is generally where I see the most mistakes or errors is you don't look at the, the what units the data frame are in. So if your data frame's in feet down here in the bottom right hand corner, then you're gonna wanna enter this in, in feet. But since we're in meters, we're gonna put that into meters. Once we click on that, we should be, a, uh, sh should be okay and we satisfy all those little green dots essentially. So I'm gonna scroll down here and this is gonna create point labels or label points. Optional, I wanna do that because that's actually what I'm interested in. Um, the, other, the other geometry that it's gonna create is either a polyline or we can switch that to a polygon. That's just going to be a square grid. You could go over and digit, you know, digitize at the intersection of those points, but that's probably a little more effort than you need. I'm gonna actually just use this label points that it creates. So I'm gonna hit okay. Tool is going to run depending upon the size of the unit and the number of plots. This will probably generate around 40 plots, something along those lines, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, so it should run relatively quick. Uh, if it's a big, big area, then it's going to take a lot, a lot longer. So we have, you know, three, six, seven, eight by uh, three, six, seven, eight. So 64 plots within that grid, right? Um, we're going to turn off this sample plots. Notice that it puts it in order, point, line, polygon. So I'm going to turn off the sample plots, and you're going to see that there are my um, there's my grid of plots. Now uh, we could measure this out. We might want to do that because it looks like, and if you remember from sampling, um, it's not going to always be great. So I have my snapping tool enabled, so it's going to point snap. So there we have uh, 85.82 feet. 89, so we're going to take this point and we're going to drag it down and snap it to this point. So I'm going to zoom back to my previous extent and I'm going to close our toolbox just so it's out of my way. And so we're going to take this point, we're going to snap it down to here. So how we want to do that is we're going to click over here, list by selection, and I'm going to turn these guys off so that I just have sample point labels, which is what I what I created here. Now I can just take my select features, I can highlight that, and it's just going to grab the sample plots. I'm then going to go up to editor and I'm going to start editing. So if you don't have editor toolbar up here, we go up to customize toolbars, and you're going to turn on editor. While you're there, you might as well turn on snapping as well. And we want to snap using uh, point snapping. So make sure that your point is enabled. So editor, start editing. Now when I start editing, you have to make sure that this create features is enabled. So GIS has kind of built this next layer in that uh, you, you must click on this create features. Mine's hidden over here on the right hand side by my catalog tree, but since my catalog tree is open, um, I'm gonna click on create feature. That's gonna pull it up. So now what they're gonna say is, okay, what do you want to, what do you want to actually edit? Well, I wanna edit this sample plots label and I'm editing the points. And now you can see my editor toolbar, more tools become enabled. So I'm gonna grab this edit tool, which is very similar to your select elements tool. Grab your edit tool. We're going to highlight over, just get the four headed arrow over top, and we're going to drag those points down. And it should pop. You'll see it snap to my point, and I'm going to drop it. If you want to be certain of it, you can always zoom in. And we see that we missed it here. So I'm going to go grab it again and pop to it. Drop it and then hit editor, stop editing. It's gonna ask me, do you wanna save your edits? Yes, I do. And then it doesn't look like it's completely on it, but if we measured the distance between these two things, it's you know down to the thousands of a foot. It's really, really close. I'm going to slick back over here to list by drawing order, right click, zoom to layer, and then there are your sample plots. Now notice down here, these are now outside of your unit boundary. Well, that's the downside to random randomness. So 
Um, these might be borderline plots or they might be outside. So if, you, if your sample called for more, sometimes what I will do is generate a bigger polygon just so I, I can alleviate some of this issue because I, I still wanna have a statistically valid sample. And if you know these plots are borderline plots, it's just based upon that random number generator. The other way is I might go into um, you know, back to forest measurements one where I had uh, the distance spacing between my plots. I might start here you know, by a random number in the upper, the Northwest corner. And you know, we had 175 feet by 175 feet. So therefore we needed a random number that would be less than those two numbers. And it would generate a starting point somewhere up in this upper corner. Completely legit other way to do it. You can just digitize or you know, create that point location um, by making a point feature or even just taking that you know, sample random point that you had and drag it over to those individual coordinates. So those, those are other ways to do it. But the fishnet tool is really nice. The sample plots, you're just going to want to rename that because sample plots label probably not a great one. But if you open the attribute table, it's going to have an object ID number. The way these are created um, are a little a, a little strange. So if we just label those features, you're going to see that it, it it starts generally down here in the bottom bottom corner. And the way that it works is it it repeats. It doesn't do kind of a snaking option. So it's not terribly ideal for us with inventory plots. Um, so you might have to go in, you know, add a new uh, field, make that an integer, and then just, you know, put in your individual plot numbers if if this isn't going to be satisfactory. But for most time, most of the times, this this will actually work. So hopefully that helps uh, putting in plots. Um, there's other tools that you can grab, um, and if you have questions, let me know, and I can uh, I can help you through those uh, processes.